Historians, nature lovers, school teachers, businessmen, and this meteorologist are about to embark on an environmental quest. We're headed toward an uninhabited island in the middle of Orchard Lake in Oakland County. There are rare plants and archaeological finds on Apple Island dating back centuries. We'll take a walk through history. That reaches back thousands of years. Apple Island sits where the watersheds of the Huron, Clinton, and Rouge Rivers come together. This 35-acre island was a meeting place and sanctuary for Native Americans before they relinquished the land in 1807 in the Treaty of Detroit. As we disembark and ascend the steep steps, historian Carol Fink pays homage to the island's original inhabitants. We break into groups and right away, our naturalist makes a discovery. The other thing that's really great is if you notice that three leaf plant back there, not poison ivy, but it's Jack in the pulpit and that does grow in our park system. It's a great wildflower, but here it's growing so much bigger than I'm used to seeing. So that's really special to see these plants like really thriving on the island. Under the dense foliage are hints of a previous life. Two wells are uncovered. They provided water for drinking and cooking. Lake water reserved for other uses was brought onto the island by water barrel sites off the North Shore. An ancient maple tree stands sentinel over it all. This is, we call her, uh, she's known as Grandmother Maple. She's over 300 years old. This maple tree knows all the secrets and all the stories of what's gone on on the island since before it was the United States. Okay, Grandma, I'll see you later. On we go, back in time, until we reach the 1856 summer retreat of Scottish dry goods merchant Colin Campbell. It was a uh, single-story white house with a clapboard house with a red roof. Memoirs indicate there were um, a couple of parlors, there was a bedroom for a visiting dignitary, and there was a family garden in the shape of a Maltese cross. So they had some fruit trees and some uh, grape vines. Um, there were sheep on the island and a couple horses because that's how they would transport stuff was on wagon, horse and wagon. And then of course um, chickens for eggs and um, cows for milk. So it was a pretty much of a self-sustaining environment when the Campbells lived here in the summertime. At one point, the island supported more than 70 people. Friends and family spent their summer swimming and fishing in the lake. Their method of communication with the mainland was to yell across Orchard Lake toward Commerce Road for a scow or transport to pick them up, all captured in these black and white memories. This is all that's left of the 19th century Campbell homestead. The family lived on Apple Island for 60 years without electricity or plumbing. Now the very gardens that they planted have reclaimed their home. As the island changed ownership over the years, accommodations improved. Cisterns and plumbing were added, electricity too. Here the ruins of the last Apple Island residence, the Willis Ward home. These shards of porcelain and glass indicate he may have constructed indoor bathrooms, all lost due to fire in the early 1940s. The ruins undisturbed, nature growing wild for decades, until the Ward descendants donated Apple Island to the West Bloomfield School District in 1970. An ironic twist brings educators to the island today. You see, despite the name, nature lovers discovered there were no more apple trees on Apple Island. We worked with a historical society and two years ago we planted four apple trees here. So today our goal is to go back to our site where our apple trees are and that's where we'll release our butterflies. Painted lady butterflies raised by their second grade students. There they go. <laughs> all right. Have a happy life on Apple Island. The goal of all attending is to make Apple Island more accessible as an educational resource. Not an easy task. Transportation's an issue. Uh, we don't have any facilities out here, so we have to think about that in terms of plumbing or toilet facilities or water, which we can manage, but you can't, you know, you have to be mindful of that. It's complicated. For us, I mean, there, there's been many ideas talked about, but whether it's, you know, honeybee colonies or tapping maple trees or maybe small farms or, you know, items like that, uh, we'd love to have more tours that people can be more familiar with. For now, as the school district and businessmen work out a plan, Apple Island maintains its mystery among the ruins. Sure. On Apple Island, I'm Laurie Pinson, Fox 2 News. One, two, three.